If we take a tissue, God bless, and the secretions that come down, we put them in a tissue and close it and let it dry. If it's fluid coming from the brain, the tissue won't stick together like when we wet it with water, it gets wet, but if it dries, it won't stick together. However, the secretions coming from the nose due to nasal diseases make the tissue stick together. This is something, initially to reassure us until we understand the whole issue. Peace be upon you, doctor. I have a fluid coming out of one side of my nose, and I'm very worried that... The problem is that this fluid isn't coming from the nose, but from the brain. Because I watched many videos that made us anxious and scared, telling us that when fluids are on one side of the nose, we should be worried. So, to understand the issue calmly, we should know that the nose is located below the brain. Between the nose and the brain, there is a bone, meaning a strong bone with grooves, and a nerve passes through it. The second neighbor is the eye. The discharge that comes from the nose, why does the nose have secretions? We all know that nasal secretions are mucus. This mucus increases during cold weather, infections, and allergy times. Sometimes it becomes colored, and Sometimes it ranges from yellow to green. What is the difference between nasal secretions and the secretions that might come from any other place, like the neighbors, especially the brain or the base of the skull? The difference is that the fluid around the brain and the nasal fluid are different. Nasal fluid is mucus. What does mucus mean? This mucus is a bit sticky and contains proteins that make it more viscous. Therefore, we all know that nasal secretions are somewhat heavy. The fluid around the brain is water, meaning it is a fluid exactly like water. All right, also, how will we differentiate? If I have secretions from my nose due to a cold, inflammation, or something, from the brain and the major bone between the brain and the nose is affected. What happens is that we differentiate between these two by simply conducting a chemical analysis. We can determine whether this fluid is coming from the brain or from the nasal passages. But before the chemical analysis, when does the fluid around the brain escape from the brain and the membranes surrounding the brain and come out through our noses? The most common causes are injuries, whether it's an accident or a blow that breaks this bone and injures the membrane around the brain and damages the nasal mucosa, allowing the fluid to flow without anything to stop it. This blow could be from an accident or a surgical procedure. Endoscopic sinus surgeries can all be exposed to this problem as a complication, as well as surgeries that are primarily performed on the brain, whether through the nose or through an opening in the brain. If there was a surgery performed, and we notice this fluid coming down afterward, it is most likely coming from the brain. This is the main reason we might get hit. The second thing that could cause this is diseases that erode the bone itself, between the brain and the nasal cavities. What are these diseases? Chronic diseases that affect the bones themselves, the most famous being syphilis, and many other diseases like that, but they are not as common. So can this problem occur where the fluid comes down from the brain through the nose without there being a fracture, a disease eroding the bone, or a tumor, God forbid, eroding the bone? Yes, it often happens without a reason. So what would make us worry if the patient comes and says, I have Water, water, it's not mucus. It comes out from one side of the nose and increases a lot. If I bend down to pick something up from the ground, pray, cough or strain, then you find water coming out of the nose. This water, as I told you, is a colorless fluid, exactly like water, not mucus, not colored, not yellow or green. Anyone who tells me it's colored yellow or green, it's likely not what we are talking about, which is the cerebrospinal fluid around us. This fluid comes out from one side and increases when we bend down, prostrate, cough or strain, and it drips. We can't pull it back into the nose. Any fluid that comes from the nose, if it's simple and in small amounts, we can pull it back into the nose, but not this. The patient finds the drops, continuously falling one after the other, as if a small faucet is open, bringing out water. Okay, if that happens, what should we do? We go to the doctor and the doctor suspects this issue so they ask you to collect this fluid so we can take it to the lab and analyze it. There is a substance or substances in this fluid that are present in the cerebrospinal fluid and not in nasal secretions. Initially, we can find out with the tissue method. As I told you, by putting a little or wiping with the tissue and seeing if it sticks or not. If it sticks, we shouldn't worry too much. It will hopefully get better 
and the doctor will treat us. But if it doesn't stick and the tissue just gets wet and that's it, when we open it after a while, it opens normally and doesn't stick. We should be concerned. At that point, we collect it and go to have it analyzed. After analyzing it, the idea is to determine the causes of what happened and its location, so that if we want to fix it, we can confirm that this problem exists. We perform a CT scan in a specific way to determine where this hole is located, where the opening is in case we need to close it, and whether it is a single opening or multiple openings. This matter is not easy. It requires sometimes scans, dyes, and many things that the doctor requests, and no one should go and do it alone. Sometimes we also request an MRI. Why an MRI? To ensure there is no tumor eating away at the bone of the skull base. And to ensure there is no tumor inside the brain, increasing the pressure of this fluid. If a tumor occurs inside the brain in the channel where this fluid is circulated and drained, its pressure increases, meaning the increased pressure on this bone tries to escape, and it escapes through this bone because, as we said, this bone is weak. Is there anything else? Yes, there is a type without tumors and without anything, where the pressure of this fluid becomes high for no reason. It occurs in women who are slightly fair-skinned and a bit overweight. Around the age of 40 or 50, it also appears in the Emirates. If we know that this fluid is cerebrospinal fluid through analysis, and we perform imaging to locate it, and we are reassured by an MRI that there is no other problem in the brain, what is our reaction? How do we treat it? The main idea is to prevent the potential problem of having an opening between the brain and the nose, and the nose being exposed to the outside. God has surrounded the brain with a skull and protected it from all sides with membranes and fluids to prevent microbes from entering. However, when our nose becomes directly connected to the brain with fluid flowing back and forth, it becomes easy for an infection to occur in the protective membranes of the brain and in the brain itself. This is a serious issue. The goal of stopping this problem is to prevent the connection between the brain and the nose so that microbes do not transfer from our nostrils to the brain. Initially, if this issue is due to an injury, the likelihood of it happening is very high. This means we leave the patient without doing anything, just giving them some medication to reduce the pressure around the brain, and we wait for healing to occur due to the fracture or surgery or otherwise. If it doesn't stop, then we fix it. If there is another problem, we treat that other problem along with the repair. If the fluid leakage from the nostrils doesn't stop, surgeries are performed on the patient. The first thing is to fix it from the nostrils, and it's best to use an endoscope in a procedure to reach this area and place materials that act as a barrier between the bone and this opening, covering it from above, from the brain side and from the nostril side, sealing it with layers so that the fluid doesn't leak again from this area. This is an endoscopic repair Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we need to open up, then the neurosurgeon opens an opening, and then repairs from inside the brain itself, placing stronger materials, especially if the opening is very large or mm, there are multiple openings. Or if there is another reason in the brain that requires intervention, they repair it accordingly. But not everyone who has a bit of nasal discharge should think that they have cerebrospinal fluid leaking from their nose and get scared or worried. As I mentioned, these are the steps. And hopefully, things will be fine if we diagnose correctly and don't panic. Wishing you a million times good health. If you like these videos, give us a like and subscribe to the channel so we know you're waiting for more videos from us. Wishing you a million times good health.